Classes and Object-Oriented Programming. This is Chapter 9 in our Python textbook and also Chapter 9 for this semester. So what is a class? You just watched a video that gave you a short introduction about what a class is. A class describes a set of objects with the same behavior, so it's similar to a blueprint as was described in the last video. You should know what a class isn't. It isn't the actual object, but it's a description of the object and its behaviors. Just like a blueprint isn't actually a house, it's just what's used to create the house. So a class isn't an object, but it's all the descriptions of the, ob of the object, its properties, and its behaviors that's used to create the object. In Alice, classes were grouped as similar objects in classes. So we had the biped class, the flyer class, the prop class, quadruped class, so on and so forth. So when you were programming in Alice, you were used to working with classes. In Alice, the parts of a class, it defined the property, so what did the object look like, and its procedures, so what could it do, and it also had its own functions. So the procedures weren't the same for every class. They could be a little bit different. The props weren't going to do the same thing as a quadruped. All that was defined in the class. Now, in programming languages in general, classes have attributes and methods. So what we've been doing up this, to this point hasn't really been object-oriented programming. We've been do doing regular structured programming where we used variables and functions. But when you do a class, it's its own entity separate from the program, and a class will have attributes that are like variables, and it'll have methods that are like functions. You'll see the similarities, but just remember that these happen in the programming section, and these happen in a class. So I'm not going to have a method in the programming section, and I'm not going to have a function in the class. They look the same, but when it's in a class, it's a method. When it's in the programming section, it's a function. Now, one thing that you need to know about a class is that it's going to give you a public interface. We did this particularly with the Finch robot because somebody else created this class, and we just used it. The part that we use is the public interface. So the attributes and methods that define an object in a class put together is the public interface. The process of providing a public interface while hiding the implementation is called encapsulation. So when we did, when we used the Finch class, we would call the methods, but did we know how the methods were programmed? No. Did we care how the methods were programmed? No. We just knew what they were and how to use them. That's the encapsulation part. Well, we don't have to look at the programming. We didn't have to look at the class to know what to use. We could just look at the public interface. So we were actually given documentation called an API that told us what the variables were and the methods for the Finch class. So we were able to use it. That's the public interface. And it was all encapsulated into a Finch class that we imported. We've also been doing this with other classes, such as lists, sets, and dictionaries. We didn't create the methods, we were just able to use them, and we were given a table of what those methods were and basically what they did. So those classes all were encapsulated. What we're going to be doing now in this chapter is actually creating our own classes. So we're going to see behind the scenes, we're going to be doing the, pro the class itself um, that it results in encapsulation. So we're going to be doing the class and taking a look at the public interface, how it's used. So really, there are two different things. We've got the class, we've got the program, and how they work together. That's what we're going to be doing in Chapter 9. So classes use methods, and let's do a quick review of what a method is and how it's a little bit different from a function. So you have already worked with objects of a class already, such as the Finch objects. Lists, sets, and dictionaries are also um, classes that had methods with them. So I want you to pause the video now, and in your notes that you've been working on, I want you to list all the methods you can remember for each class. So think about the Finch class, the list, the set, and the dictionary class, and what methods can you remember that you use. Now you can go back in your notes, you can go back in your textbook, you can go back on the class website and find these answers. You can also work with a partner to discuss it and see if you're doing them right, if you can remember them. Once you get a couple of them listed, then that will jog your memory and help you to make, make the list as big as you possibly can. So go ahead and pause the video, work with somebody, and fill in this table in your notes.
Now you started the video up again, so hopefully you've already finished your lists and did they look something like this. I've listed all the ones that I could find from the textbook and the class website. So you probably did too, and you've got something that's kind of like this. These are all methods for each type of class. Notice that some of them are the same, like dictionary and list both had pop, uh, but there were a lot of them that were different. And even though they had the same methods, they were declared this one had its own pop for in its class, and this one had its own. So whoever created the class, who programmed the class, came up with these methods for Finch, these for list, these for set, and these for dictionary. And they are encapsulated in those classes. So how do we use the methods? What does a method call look like? Well, first you have to create an object of the class. And that's really called an instance. So we might say object of a class, but in programming terms, that's an instance. Once you have an instance, you're going to use the dot notation to call the method. But we're not really calling a method in program language. It's called invoke. We're invoking a method. So here's the example from Finch. So first we had to create the instance of the class. And I called mine Birdie. And then I used the dot notation with this instance. So this instance is invoking the LED method. And this instance is invoking the wheels method. This is things that we've done before, but just realize that invoking a method is different. The, the programming structure looks different than a function call. So here are some important things to know about creating a class, particularly in Python, but just in general. So you're going to start with a class definition. Just, as, just like we define a function, we're going to define a class, and it's going to be in our code. This is the one time that you use a capital letter. So the class name will have a capital letter, just like Finch had a capital letter. You're going to initialize all attributes, which another name for attribute is an instance variable. So you can kind of think of an attribute as a variable. And you're going to initialize all of them in something called a constructor. So this is a very important method in the class. You're going, it's always going to be our first method, and it's called a constructor it initializes our variables. The constructor uses two underscores in the name, so two in the front and two in the end. So def and an underscore underscore, init underscore underscore, and it's got this parameter. So this is kind of an important thing. If you don't do it correctly, the computer is not going to be able to call the constructor. So this is very important that you do it exactly correct. You're always going to use the parameter self inside the class definition. So here's my parameter self. This self parameter refers to the particular object of the class or the instance that is invoking the method. All attributes inside the class are only available to the class. So if I have an instance variable, only that class can see that instance variable. They are not public. You cannot use it in your main program. So if you need the value of an attribute, maybe you want to use it in a function somewhere, you must create a method in the class that returns the value to the main program. So you have to remember that the class is kind of its own entity, the program is its own entity, and they really don't have much to do with each other. So if there's something in the class that the program needs, it has to share it or return that value back to the program. We're going to be doing all of that in our first program. Our first program in Chapter 9 is going to, we're going to create a clicker class. And we're going to use the clicker class in a program. So remember what a clicker is. This one is an example of a handheld clicker where somebody is just counting. Let's say that you're in a race and it's just counting how many people are finishing. Or maybe you're at a concert and it's going to count how many people are coming through the door. So it's just a handheld clicker that keeps track or it counts people. So we're going to create a class that counts or tallies people. What variables will we need in this class? Well, we know we're going to need one variable or one attribute, and that's going to be a counter. So every time I click the knob, it should be counting. We also are going to, do, to define behaviors of this counter, or the instance of this class. So what, is it, what does this counter need to do? Well, it needs to increment the counter. It might need to reset it, so maybe after every hour, or every day I want to reset the counter. So not only am I going to increment, but I also need to reset. So it would be a very simple um, class. 
At some point I might want to use this value somewhere in my main program, so I want to return the value of the counter to the main program. And I also might want to display it. I might want to do some kind of print on the screen that shows the value. So this is what we're going to do in our program. I want you to pause the video again and fill this out in your notes so that you can refer back to it as we're actually programming. It will be easy to refer back to your notes and then come back to this slide. So fill out the table that asks about the attributes and the behaviors and we'll be able to mark them off as we go when we create our class. Then when you start up this video again, we're going to be in Code, code Sculptor and we're actually going to create this, this program.